So it seems nowadays that everything in modern society is geared at stressing you out. You know, you've got more intense work practices than you've ever had before. You can't just go to work anymore, you have to work from home as well. You're always available, you're always online, you're always contactable. The phone in your pocket is shouting at you every five minutes. You've got social media sending you notifications about things that aren't important. And what you really need is something to help you just get away from all that stress. And that is why I love photography so much. Photography for me is an escape. It's a way of getting away from all the stress and hassle that modern life gives us. It's a way to get out into nature and appreciate the smaller things in life and slow down and almost grind to a halt. Which is precisely why I decided to drive off to Wales and do another 36 hour challenge. So the plan, just in case you didn't know, but I'm pretty sure I've already told you, or you may have worked out on the last one, is I've got 36 hours from the moment that I get to my first location. And in those 36 hours, I need to get as many different types of landscape subject, if you like, as I can. So for instance, a waterfall, a coastal shot, a woodland, some architecture, you know, uh, other stuff, a lake, a mountain, that sort of thing. That's the plan. Yeah, I was watching Gary's uh, 36 hour challenge that he did in the Lake District and North Yorkshire. And to be honest with you, I thought that's really poorly organized, guys. I know what you're thinking, right? You're thinking, Gary, what are you thinking? Why are you doing another 36 hour thing when the last one went so terribly wrong? What was he thinking? Why would he do another 36 hour challenge after the nightmare he had last time? And you're right, I'm probably a total idiot, but I do have something in my favour this time. I'm not organising any of it. I've got Alan Coles on the case. So it got me thinking, I've wanted him to come to South Wales for a long time. I thought I'd organise a few locations for him to come down, shoot, have a great time, and show him that it can be done in the 36 hours. First place I wanted him to visit was the second Seven Crossing. <laughs> Croeso y Cymru, or as I, would, uh, as I would say to you, Gary Norman, welcome to Wales. Specifically, I'm at the Severn Bridge. Just as you come in from England into Wales, you've probably come over this bridge if you've come to Wales. It's got a lovely sweeping uh, arch if you stand under the bridge or to the right and to the left. I mean, everyone knows, if you go to Wales, the Prince of Wales Bridge is an iconic shot. It's got to be taken. If you're anywhere near South Wales, you absolutely have to photograph it. And you have to photograph it at sunrise. Anybody worth their salt's gonna do that. Of course, got far better ones up north, but the lazy bugger wouldn't come that far. Yeah, I didn't shoot the bridge, unfortunately. I got stuck in traffic on the M25, which is really unfortunate. Don't be bloody ridiculous, that's not what really happened. He went to McDonald's after oversleeping and ended up having loads to eat. Well, yeah, actually, I did stop um, on the way in the service station, but it was a very short, short visit. And uh, to be honest with you, I only had a very, very small Scotch egg. From what he told me, he had, I think, a very small Scotch egg a hash brown, double sausage and egg McMuffin, another hash brown, a coffee, and I think another hash brown. So yeah, so you know, unfortunately, I missed the uh, I missed the sunrise at the bridge. It was it was unfortunate, but to be honest with you, it was just unavoidable. So I'm just coming over the Seven Crossing, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's a fantastic morning. If I'd have been a couple of hours earlier, I could have done a sunrise thing here, but maybe more of that tomorrow. Anyway, um... So yeah, so anyway, I decided to, to skip the bridge um, and move on to the second location uh, as planned. Next on my list, uh, castles. Now, in Wales, we've got a lot of castles and they are Norman castles. Obviously, Gary Norman, I thought that would be quite amusing. So I sent him to Caldicott Castle. 
This is Caldicott Castle, only 1.8 miles away from the second Severn Bridge. So uh, quite an easy one to get to after. I'll be honest with you, I've never been in there. I've seen lots of photographs from there and it looks absolutely fabulous. The car park is right behind you. It's free and it's free to get in the castle as well. And when you get to Caldicott Castle, it's best if you walk around the perimeter. It's not a large castle, but you get all the best views if you sort of walk around it. Yeah, um, no, I didn't really, I didn't really walk around the perimeter at all, to be fair. Um, I just found the closest spot where I could see the castle and just really just started taking images from there and never really went anywhere else, to be honest with you. I want to say thank you here to Alan for easing me in gently, steady, because I don't need a pint of spit to pronounce it, so that's a bit of a result. So this is Coldicott Castle here, and it's a Norman castle, I think this is probably why he sent me here. And this is my first stop now. This is a bit of a warm-up, I think, to what, for what's to come, but hey, bit of, uh, bit of old architecture, bit of, uh, you know, dereliction. Can't beat it really, can you? So let's get cracking. So this is the first composition here that I'm settling on and what I can see here I'm sort of on the apex of the of the, the, the castle if you like I'm on one of the corners I think um, and I've got this really large uh, sort of what would it be called a tower turret I don't know it's a really large tower in front of me and then I've got one off to the left and one off to the right one off to the left and one off to the right the other way around um, and I think that the, the, um, there would be a temptation here to sort of step back and try and get everything in as much as you can. But I don't actually think that works particularly here. I am sort of doing it to a point with this first shot. And basically I've got this large tower in front of me and the one that's on the right. And I'm kind of ignoring the one that's on the left because it's kind of... Um, it's got a tree that's sort of partially blocking the view. And then I've got this sort of chopped down tree that's on the right hand side of the image. And there's like a little path that runs through. And I don't know if you can actually notice the path in the shot, probably not. But um, yeah, the sky's pretty nice. There's some nice clouds, it's a bit blue, but it's quite nice. So I'm taking that shot first, but then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then steer myself away, I think, from the, from the obvious sort of very, um, sort of you know taking getting the whole of the castle in and trying to get that sort of snapshot type feel and I'm going to focus more on maybe just getting parts of the building but with some sort of context to its surrounds um, if that makes sense so the first shot here is is a very much like a what I would say is what probably most people would come here and try and take but after this shot I'm going to try and err away from that and try and get some more abstracty shots with the castle involved rather than being the main player if that makes sense So a bit of a thing with me at the moment tends to be that I have a, something to shoot at 
i.e. great big whacking castle and I turn and shoot in the completely opposite direction but I just really like these trees there's like this little avenue of trees on the right hand side of this path and I just really really like the light on them and I really like the way that they arc round now I had a runner just go through just now which I took a shot of which you know had a bit of human interest that could be good and I'm hopeful that I might have a few dog walkers wandering up this way so I'm going to keep pointing in this direction and see if I can get some of those people come through. So back to the castle again uh, and there's some really nice light at the moment on the actual castle itself or part of it so what i'm trying to do here really is go in quite close and pick out some detail so there's there's a there's a window on this do you mind thank you there's a window on this uh turret here and there's a nice bit of ivy growing up next to it so i've gone in quite tight on that i think that'll look quite nice because there's some really nice sunlight on that there's also these sort of reedy type uh, plants here uh, i think they're the i'm not sure what they're called but i think they're the ones that flower in the pink because you can still see a little of the pinks left but most of them have died off now but there's some of those and the lights catching those against a slightly darker background uh, again the side wall of the castle and that's really nice and then there's the actual side wall itself with the ivy growing up it and the little holes in it and I've sort of gone in close and maybe tried to pick a bit of detail out of that as well so that's proving to be actually quite a nice little one area um, for all these shots it's, it's really actually very good and the other shot that I've got as well is looking straight down here and I've got this tree which was at the very start if you remember me saying that there was a tree that's obscuring the far end of the castle well if you use that tree as almost like a frame like an arch it's arching over a little pathway that runs around the side of the castle you've got a couple of we've got some nice light in the background with the trees at the back and then you've got some of the detail of one of the other towers or turrets of the castle with a doorway and that quite work, that works quite nicely as well it'd be, it'd be nice if there's a little bit more light in the actual pathway bit but there isn't but uh, i think that works quite well as well so yes i think probably going to take that shot and then head on to the next location um, because I feel like I've got quite a lot of nice little bits and pieces from here and this is a, a really good start. So, Caldicott Castle done, very, very nice, gotta say. Uh, I think I probably didn't take the obvious shots there. Um, you know, I was a bit a bit more um, abstract, perhaps, which, you know, may or may not be a good thing. Who could say? But now we are on to the next location. And the good thing about this, the good thing about Alan's planning here is that every location is quite a short hop from one to the next so for instance here i've got 15 minutes before i get to the next place which is fantastic whereas if i'd if i'd have organized it myself i'd probably be driving about i don't know 150 miles to the next location or at least you know an hour away or something whereas this is 15 minutes away so 
it's absolutely perfect and it's a lovely morning and I'm really hoping that the light is gonna I quite like it like this it's not harsh it's quite diffuse because it's it's sunny but it's a bit hazy and that's exactly what I want for the next place so yeah let's uh let's get on and crack on and oh crikey and get there shall we everyone knows that if you go to South Wales the second seven bridge is an absolute icon. the what second seven bridge second, second seven, seven bridge yeah is an icon that has to be shot second set oh, man, no. oh, oh, no. Prince of Wales Bridge Prince of Wales Bridge yeah. I mean everyone oh, am I looking at you I mean, everyone knows, if you go to Wales, what is it again? <laughs> Prince of Wales Bridge. Okay, okay. I mean, everyone knows, if you go to Wales, the Prince of, what? 